Patricia Field is in our uh, studio right now uh, for the very first time. Thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure to be here, Joey. Uh, we just found out that we're both Greek, so we were chatting up a storm uh, <laughs> right there. So, Kalo Fete, welcome to the show. So, if you don't know, Patricia Field is the person who is responsible for creating these iconic looks for the fashion on. We're talking Sex in the City, we're talking The Devil Wears Prada, we're talking Confessions of a Shopaholic, we're talking, we're talking. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, when you look back at the Sex in the City years, do you, does it hit you at all? Do you realize at all the impact that you had on the way we talk about fashion and fashion designers, the Le Boutins, the everything that you made even more iconic? I realize it um, as a result of the many women who tell me this. I mean, when I was doing it, I, of course, we, the show became this huge hit, and I was, of course, aware of it, but um, I have to say, I was doing my, my work, my job. It was good, we were, but um, yes, it just came as an after thing, like the, kind of the tsunami of it all. Um, and of course, I'm very happy, I believe that, um, People enjoyed it, and when they see me, I can see it in their eyes. And their <laughs> you can see it right now, yeah. And you know, it's just, it's, it's a once in a lifetime, and it happened, and there we were. Where do you think all of this came f from for you? Because it, it is an eye, it's not something, I don't, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, is it something that can be taught, or is it an instinct that you have? Well, <clears throat> I, I, I always, th I began to understand that I think in life people should do what they're good at. Good point, for, yes, to start. Know, for their career, because if you're good at it, you will elevate and you will be successful. As a child, I guess I always had my own style, but I, it was nothing conscious in my head. I you were went, trying to do something. No. And I went to university and I studied philosophy and politics, liberal arts. And um, I come from a family of bi independent business entrepreneurial people. And so when I got out of school, I kind of just organically veered towards um, my own business and how, through what I was good at, fashion. The movies and TV, um, part of my career came 20 years after I was already um, owning my own yeah. boutique and so on. Um, so what are you, I mean, can, there's fashion and there are trends. So what is fashionable to you now? What, obviously there's a difference between trend and fashion. What, when you see something, like, how do you know that that works? Well, I, my formula, includes um, my general understanding of, I love history and culture. I love the social and cultural times and how history repeats itself. And that's part of my mix. I'm not so, um, I mean, I think you have to kind of have your own original formula to go by. It's something uniquely yours, and that's what I think is mine. To not always follow a trend. Yeah, I, I don't tend towards following anything because um, I wasn't brought up that way. I was brought up as an independent person with the confidence of my mind. Thank God I had a very good family who loved me and thought I was great. And um, from that, I study things. For example, I'm here um, in Montreal for the um, for the cultural, the fashion and design um, event, and Scooter LaForge is here with me. He's an artist who I work with very closely. For me now, to answer your question directly, I think going forward, I'm feeling the desire from people for something individual. Mm -hmm something uniquely their own because i think we've gone through about 10 years of this um, mass shopping mass shopping no matter where you go you go to any big city or even medium-sized city and it's the same stores everywhere so there's been a dumbing down 
uh, a uniformization or something like that, which I think people are now responding when they see something one of a kind. And it doesn't have to be so much money. It, it brings the young, it gives the, um, the, the groundwork for young artists to... To be original, to stand to out. To be original and to get, to get somewhere, to see their work out there. So I think that's kind of a trend that I'm feeling, but to me it's kind of a throwback from the 80s. You know, all those young 80s artists, uh, Keith Haring, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Everyone was doing their own school. thing. Yes, and they were doing it in my shop at the time. Well, you are definitely one of a kind, <coughs> Patricia Field, and you had them all in your shop. We're going to put up that event information because you did, you, it's almost sold out. You still have a chance, yes. a teeny tiny chance to catch Patricia. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. I, I, it's I, great I, being here. I'm trying not to, you know, fan out on you, but uh, anyway, thank you again for joining us and continued success. I mean, listen, you don't need it. It just keeps on going. Thank